I'm Daniel Konstansky, and this is my display this year here at Philly Brickfest. So it's it's every LEGO pirate ship and most of the big pirate sets from the last uh, however many years it's been, 26 or so. Um, so the ships obviously are the main the main piece. So got the first one here, the Barracuda, the original or Dark Shark, depending on which side of the pond you hail from. <laughs> there were different different names for for depending on where you were in the world. Yep. Yeah, so it was the Dark Shark over in Europe, and it was the Black Seas Barracuda here, which is what I knew it as as a kid. So this was the one I coveted as a child. Never got it, so now I have three of them. <laughs> I know a lot of people have a lot of like fond memories attached attached to that ship. There, what what were some are some of your favorite details of this particular ship? Um, so what I really like about this one, and no other pirate ship ever repeated this, with the exception of it. Kind of, they kind of did it in the skulls of it. You can see here they actually included the holds that you could flip up. And there's nothing in there, and it was a pain in the butt to reach your hand in. But just the concept of it, I always loved. The, a little more realistic with that type of thing. Okay. Yeah, you know, burst out of it. So, and then that one was paired. So all the pirate ships have always paired. Each wave has paired a good guy ship with a bad guy ship. So obviously, and the bad guys always get the more fun, bigger ship. So, this was the Caribbean Clipper, which was the good guy ship from the original wave. My sails are a little beat up, but what can you do? It's 1989. So you guys probably weren't even born then. I, I was not. That was long I'm before I was born. Old now that's a little terrifying. So. So are some of these kits you had when, when you bought when they originally out, or have you picked all these up later? I picked all these up later. Okay. Sourced a lot of them, and actually some of them. The sales are really expensive when you source pirate ships. Um, so these two are the original sales, but you can see like on this one, I've actually made my own. Uh, so you can I got I did the design on CAD, and then I printed them on. Um, you can get like fabric printable fabric okay, right. and uh, you just print them on that and so it works really well and it's a lot cheaper than trying to do it with the uh, with sourcing it so then wave two was the original imperial flagship which is as you will see very lame in comparison to the later one but um, and then this was the first one they introduced these narrower hulls so the original good guy ship the Caribbean Clipper they were all the wide hulls and it just kind of looked funny to have a short squatty ship so this is a little more proportional um, and so that's what they did with the uh, the narrower hull pieces. So, and then the second wave, they introduced this little gimmick of when you turned the wheel, it actually kind of turned the rudder a little oh, bit. Okay. So, and they also had, and this was the, the skull's eye, which was the big one of the second wave. And for a long time, this was the undisputed biggest ship. Um, I've modified mine slightly. I added the walkways to make it a proper cannon well. That wasn't on the original ship. Uh, but the Barracuda had it, so I was like, oh, why didn't they include that? So, and they kind of did their, their attempt at the hull there in the front, which I'm going to have trouble with my big adult hands getting in there, but it pops up and you can get in the front there. So working anchor, that was a new improvement on this one, and obviously bigger. It's technically the same number of middle hull pieces, which is how pirate ship lengths are always measured, uh, but they kind of stuck it out a little farther on the front and stuck it out a little farther on the back. So... But, and then, then that year they also introduced something different, which was um, they made a small pirate ship that year, uh, the Renegade Runner. So this was like $30 when it came out, which is probably like $50 in today's with inflation. But uh, but this is a cheaper way for kids to get in and have uh, at least some of the pirate ship experience. Because pirates isn't as much fun if you don't have a ship. <laughs> That's very true. You lose a lot of the you playability. Really <laughs> you really do. Then the third wave, so basically the second wave was bigger is better. And the third wave was we can't go any bigger, so we'll try gimmicks. And it really just didn't work. So there's the gimmick, which I've just never understood. So these ones included this thing where you pull the pin and the mast collapses. It's Lego. If I want to break the mast, I'll take it <laughs> apart. I don't need this goofy gimmick that is so annoying because when you go to pick it up, it always flips the other way. So, um, but I won't lie, the ability, it, they also did this where if you pulled the pins on the back, it would break like that. And that was, I guess, kind of cool, but, but it um, meant that you couldn't have an interior cabin Okay. which was a real bummer. So it's just kind of open there and it looks stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they just took all the shortcuts, right? There's no wheels on the cannons. The colors are gaudy and uh, it just wasn't very good. This is sort of a good example of like playability at the expense of like a decent design. Yeah, exactly. And that, that went to new heights with the good guy ship of that year, which was the uh, Armada flagship. So they, they forwent the standard blue coat, red coat, and kind of did a Spanish Armada thing. And this is just too many colors in one Lego set. Like, it's just too many colors. And it just wasn't a very good set at all. 
And then I do love the minifigs, though. The, the mini that minifig cool. is very yeah, cool. The minifigs are cool. Yeah, but it was. Not, and I, I get the idea of trying to do something a little different, but it just was poorly. And then the absolute abysmal, most hated. I don't even know that you can call this a pirate ship, but they had introduced the little one, and it's just so bad in every way. It's just so bad. Like the col yeah, we, yeah, the colors, <laughs> everything is terrible. So Pirates was discontinued for like 15 years after that because it was just so terrible. So the reboot, I believe it was 2009, and they came out with this, and uh, this is pretty good. So this is the Brickbeard's bounty, and uh, you can clearly see that it's reminiscent of the Barracuda, which was smart of them to go back and uh, base it off of that. So this one's okay. The biggest problem with this one is they use these this, the little stick hose pieces for the mass, and it just, especially after the heft of the old ones, that just, just doesn't look right. It looks too twiggy. I think that's the same thing they did as the Vikings ship yeah, sail yeah, as well. Exactly. That was kind of that era. Vikings, yep. Okay. Yeah, so this one is a few years after the Vikings. But then, then Lego came out with a glorious <laughs> gift to us pirate fans, the biggest and the best ever. This one came out of nowhere, and it was, it was kind of the, um, I forget what they called it, but an advanced builder series or whatever it was back in 2010. And uh, so this is also the only one to ever include a truly proper hold uh, down in there. And obviously it's got an extra middle, middle piece. So this is actually four middle pieces long. And uh, this is just magnificent in every way. It really is. You compare that to some of these other ships we've looked at, and it just doesn't even. St <laughs> you take this next to it, it's just like that's that's just funny right there. That's just funny, like yeah. So, looks like the little you know yeah. So let's see. How old is this one now? I want to say 2010. That sounds about right. That sounds right because I, I remember because this was my I was studying for my PE exam when this came out. And I said if I pass the PE exam, I'm gonna buy myself that pirate ship. <laughs> And I passed the PE exam, so I got the pirate ship. No, that is a, b a beautiful ship, it yeah. It is. It is magnificent. So, uh, and then they, they went and went uh, with Pirates of the Caribbean. So these are going to look a little different. I heavily modified this one because I hated how they did the back. I didn't think it was movie accurate. So this is a Black Pearl and um, modified. But, uh, but yeah, pretty decent. It was only 100 bucks when it came out. And to get a ship this size for 100 bucks back in whenever this was, 11 or 12, um, it was pretty good. Pretty good. So, based on the, I don't have the minifigures with it. I'm not sure where they went, but and then it was paired with uh, the Queen Anne's Revenge, which is one of the most striking ships ever built by Lego, just because of the color palette um, and just the cool back and everything with all the the sticker detail. And it's just it's really it's, the bones and skulls. Yeah, it, it, you know, it just screams pirate <laughs> ship, but. Uh, but yeah, and then the sails. The dark red sails are just a great color for the sails. So. And then it was discontinued again for a few years, and no new Pirates of the Caribbean movies came out. And let's face it, the last few ones haven't been very good anyway. And uh, LEGO tried one more time to reboot Pirates. The problem with it was they didn't release a good guy ship. It was the one time they didn't release a good guy ship. Anchor is caught on the other sail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. So. So again, obviously modeled after the, the previous non-licensed pirate ship. So this was the Brick Bounty. And uh, it's just a little juniorized. Like, it's yeah, not it terrible. It really has that look to yeah. it. And it was interesting because I've, I've looked into it some, and um, I haven't heard it directly from Lego, but pirates, like when I was a kid in the 80s, we played pirates. That's what we did. And now a lot of the um, kids today, like pirates have become really juniorized with like Jake and the Neverland pirates and stuff. They're seen as more of a little kid thing okay. as opposed, you know, and superheroes and all that stuff is more the, the older kid thing. So that's probably part of it, but it's, it's heavily juniorized and it only lasted one wave and then was gone. And then with the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they came out with the ghost ship, which was, um, or Salazar's Revenge is what they called it, or um, the uh, Silent Mary. And this ship is awful. Not because, like, I get what LEGO was trying to do, and it is very different. My biggest complaint is there is no good way to pick this up. Like, you pick it up and stuff breaks and falls apart. Like, you gotta kind of reach your fingers underneath and try to get the superstructure and see there, even there. Ugh. So, it's different, I guess. Yeah. And it's a ship, so I had to get it, because at this point I had all the rest, but I, I don't like this one at all. <laughs> It definitely is a very different design, yeah. It's, it's not something you display, right? Because it's not really that... I mean, it's visually interesting, but it's not something you'd put on your shelf and be like, ooh, look at my cool ship. And for a child to try to play with this would just be awful. Like, it would be awful. So, some clever building techniques and stuff, but what can you do? No. 
Well, very neat. So out, out of all of those, is there a, a clear favorite here? So, I mean, just by sheer quality, it's got to yeah. be that. But that was the, the Barracuda, the original one, was the one I pined for as a kid. So that one's got the, <laughs> the, the nostalgia, nostalgia factor. Yeah, exactly. Pure nostalgia factor. But 